relationship between Barbados and Suriname totally defended. Hundreds of thousands of dollars up for grabs in government's modern school infrastructure design competition. Barbadians advise to question vendors when purchasing produce and in sports progress in the process as the new Ryan Braffitt track nears full completion. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening, I'm Pearson Bowie. Barbados Special Envoy to Guyana and Suriname, Alfie Wiggins, has cleared the air on what the agreements are between Barbados and Suriname. She was making reference to comments made by the leader of the opposition, Ralph Thorne, on the agriculture head during the estimates debate. It was erroneously stated in the press that Suriname will be shipping 5,000 kilograms or approximately 11,000 pounds of cargo weekly. It's the carrying capacity of the aircraft. This flight, therefore, is a catalyst for trade facilitation from Barbados to Suriname and from Suriname to Barbados. Ms. Begin added that a number of areas are still being worked on. The two governments are still in pursuit of an agricultural project which includes the provision of land, the rearing of belly sheep, and the exchange of labor, the accommodation of farmers, and the allocation of land still have to be settled. The previous arrangement was not implemented by the current administration in Suriname. Additionally, Barbados and Suriname have forged alliances in agriculture, recognizing the potential for joint efforts in food security, agricultural innovation, and sustainable farming practices. Close to a quarter of a million dollars in prize money is up for grabs in government's modern school infrastructure design competition. The just launched initiative was announced today during a ceremony attended by Senior Minister Dr. William Dugid, Education Minister Kay McConney and other officials. There are four categories for the designs, nursery, primary, secondary and special needs. Dr. Dugid says the competition is open to all registered architects. We however invite architects interested in the mission of the competition to collaborate with principals, teachers, students, engineers, product designers, thinkers, community practitioners, private sector companies and other organizations to prepare designs that are innovative, creative and sustainable. Designs that provide multi-functional learning spaces and schools that provide comfortable accommodation for its users. Prize money. The prize money for the top three finalists in each of the four categories will be $20,000. Minister McConney outlined the expectations for the designs. We expect you to submit building design concepts that feature better environmental performance, allowing for more naturally ventilated spaces and optimizing shade and wind flow. We want you to incorporate energy efficient solutions and to design infrastructure and spaces that are accessible and can effectively support the needs of our learners and our special educational needs of those persons with disabilities. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw also shared her view on what schools of the future should encompass. We wish to see vibrant murals, interactive displays, and collaborative workspaces. These elements ignite passion, encourage teamwork, and foster a love for learning. In this era of technological advancement, it is expected that our modern schools seamlessly integrate technology. Schools should be built to accommodate high-speed internet, smart boards and digital resources that empower both teachers and students. These tools bridge gaps, facilitate research, and prepare students for the digital age. 
A number of significant changes are being made to tertiary learning institutions in Barbados with an aim of attracting investments. Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, Sandra Husbands, who is addressing students and officials from Wharton University who are in Barbados on an immersion program, told them about the planned education transformation. She says it's designed to help develop the skills to attract investors. We are doing significant investments in our, um, tech, our School of Technology, which is the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute. We are making um, significant changes in the Erdiston Teacher Training College, because if your teachers can't deliver what it is you want your students to learn, you're going to be wasting time. And we're also doing significant work in the Barbados Vocational and Technical Institute. And we are also looking at what we need to do in terms of the Barbados Community College. Barbados needs to develop a culture of positive experimentation if the country intends to compete successfully in the global arena. Minister of Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology, Marsha Cattle, made the suggestion while participating in a fireside chat hosted by Future Barbados at its Innovation Ignite seminar series last evening at the Walled Garden Theatre. The minister believes that Barbadian values can be integrated into research and development, which is a critical component of innovation. We have a pharmaceutical industry, largely in the global north, that, that says, look, you know, I've done this research, I've spent all this money, now how am I going to get my money back? I'm going to have to charge you $300 for this tablet. That's not for the public good, right, in any way. So I feel that what we can do here is to have, again, a more values-based approach to innovation and how we, how we do R&D and why we do R&D and what is it for and how can we find things in our natural environment that, yes, generate wealth and jobs and income, but also generate wellness. That, I feel that's so, very much the Barbados brand, right? While comparing Barbados' education system to highly innovative countries, Minister Cattle believes the culture of experimentation and exploration should be built into schools to allow students to innovate and think differently. I also think that the way that we have framed our education system has been in a way, and thankfully that is changing now uh, with this education transformation, but it has been in a way that, you know, we prioritize accepted knowledge, right? So somebody has written some th books and said, here, read that. That has in everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. And there's no play. There's no exploration, right? I want to play with something to learn about it. Um, and I find that in the jurisdictions that have faster adaptation of innovation or faster innovation, they play more and we need to play more. We'll take a break here, but coming up, Barbadians advised to ask questions about the produce they buy. Barbados and the region, on the eve of International Women's Day, have heard that countries still have a long way to go towards equity, eradicating harmful gender stereotypes, and ending all forms of violence. While acknowledging the strides made regarding law and policy, Commissioner of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, Roberta Clark, has told the Organization of American States that public policy gaps remain evident today. Ms. Clark was at the time addressing a special meeting of the OAS Permanent Council to commemorate International Women's Day. Policy inconsistent with the Inter-American standards are evident, for example, in access or limited access to sexual and reproductive rights. The Commission continues to receive reports of gynecological and obstetric violence, lack of access to health care, determination of pregnancies, criminalization of obstetric emergencies, and limited access to comprehensive reproductive health services and sex education. The campaign theme for International Women's Day 2024 is Inspire Inclusion. Interim representative of Barbados to the OAS, Christabel Rees, says Barbados is proud of its role of its female leaders. My country, Barbados, is proud to recognize the inspiring role that our female president 
Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, female parliamentarians and senators, civil servants, and Barbadian women in all their endeavors play in the development of our country. The International, women Devel um, International Women's Day campaign theme is Inspire Inclusion, while the efficient UN observance of the day is Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. When we inspire others to understand and value women's inclusion, we forge a better world. For empowering women and girls is the only way to protect their rights and make sure they can realize their full potential. Barbadians are tonight being encouraged to ask questions of vendors when purchasing produce. The advice from Acting Chief Agricultural Officer Michael James in light of what seems to be a prevalence of predial larceny. Speaking on the sidelines of the estimates debate at Parliament, Mr. James said not only farmers are being impacted by the theft of their produce. Normally when persons hear about predial larceny, all they think about is the person who had the crop and it has been stolen, they just lost a crop, they just lost money. But it goes beyond that. You're talking about a crop, for instance, that has been sprayed. And say the, the, the time for it, for that pesticide to wear off is three to five days. Sometimes it's longer depending on the type of pesticide. Somebody steals it after you have sprayed. What happens with it? Your health can be impacted by crop juice that has been stolen. According to Mr. James, Barbadians must be cautious when purchasing produce. You wanting a, a, a cheaper crop, so somebody selling, let's say, a cabbage, and it's retailing at $5 a pound, and somebody selling that $2, you're going to buy a $2 a pound crop. However, that crop still has in pesticide. It has not gone through the system. So what could happen is that you by ingesting that particular crop, you ingest a whole lot of pesticide. And that has a lot of implications for your health. Some people could be allergic to it. Next thing you know, you could fall ill. So it is not just predator larceny affecting the farmer where the crop has been stolen, but it's impacting on the health of the person who might ingest a crop that has been sprayed prior. Citrus greening disease has proven to be a menace for citrus growers in Barbados and other parts of the world, including Florida. Acting Chief Agriculture Officer Michael James has told Barbadians and lovers of limes there is no cure for the disease. Mr. James shone the light on the citrus greening disease and on efforts locally and internationally to address it. You can increase the fertilizer using organic fertilizer as well as others to give the plant a bigger boost and they will survive for a period of time. But once they catch the disease, you can't get it out of the system. There's nothing that you can do, no systemic uh, pesticide that you can use that can get the, uh, get the disease out of the plant. So they've also looked at biotechnology where they've looked at using genes from the spinach plant to go into the, um, to put into the um, citrus. But some people say, oh, that's GMO, that is, you know, dealing with some serious things there. But they have looked at that. Um, they are also looking at something called the CRISPR, which is using the genes to turn off the ability of the particular um, disease to infect the plant. Over 350 people have been trained recently in beekeeping in Barbados. As efforts continue to boost apiculture, Senior Agricultural Officer Brett Taylor has revealed that a lot of the people into beekeeping are hobbyists and some for quick money. He was at the time responding to a question posed about apiculture in Barbados by the Minister of the Environment, Adrian Ford. He outlined challenges that beekeeping officials are working on to address. We do have some issues in Barbados with one uh, called the Varroa mite. That is a problem with the bees. But our bees can be, what can I say? They, they, they manage to keep the mite away or they control or manage the mite in the hives, not being aggressive, but by being clean, cleanly, okay? So they clean themselves well. One of the other things with the honey production is that because some of the hives are not managed well, you don't have the level of production that you would have if you were in North America or some of these other places. 
Having the general public and businesses well informed about hazards and other natural disasters is top of mind for communications and disaster specialists. The Public Information and Education Committee recently met the Department of Emergency Management to discuss how they intend to sharpen the focus in bringing accurate and timely warning information. Program officer with the DEM, Simon Alleen, says there are several things they need to ensure are correct. Get the messaging right. Two, ensure that the credible sources of messaging are getting their messages out because we live in an era, not to coin the phrase, phrase of fake news. So it's very important that we get Barbadians to listen to our local experts, listen to our um, local media houses who would have been provided with the accurate details of the hazards that are facing Barbados. Well, the issue of multi-hazard impacts was also raised in the face of climate change, where weather phenomena occur outside of the usual hurricane cycle. We, we can't limit um, bad weather or, or the belief that we're going to have a lot of storms just between that time frame. What that also means is that Barbados can experience multi-hazard impacts at the same time. So in other words, while a hurricane is going on, we could experience an earthquake or while um, an earthquake is going on, you can have the tsunami and so on. So it is our um, aim at DEM to ensure that we work with our partners and to find creative ways and to ensure that the messaging reaches all levels of the society, from the business community to schools and, of course, community groups. The Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology has honored one of its own. The sports center has been named after the late Jeffrey Yard. Mr. Yard, a math instructor, retired in 2000 and died in 2003. His children, Quincy and Rachel Yard, were present as they accepted an award on his behalf from Chairperson of the Board of Management, Mrs. Corrine Kennedy-Tate. Principal Ian Drakes said Yard was one of many who set the hallmark at SJPI for those to follow. Through his academic achievements, leadership in sports, exceptional social skills, and culinary talent, Yard impacted the lives of countless students, faculty members, and staff members of the institution. He embodied the spirit of the SJPI, SJPP at the time, fostering and nurturing an environment that allows students to thrive and achieve their full potential. Today, we observe his legacy by renaming this building in his honor. A fitting tribute to a man who gives so much to this institution. The Jeffrey Yard Sports Complex will stand as a testimony to his profound impact on the SJPA community and his unwavering commitment to betterment of the institution and its students. Deputy Director of the National Sports Council, Emerson Bascom, who spoke on behalf of the Minister of Sports, Youth and Community Empowerment, Charles Griffith, said Mr. Yard was a cornerstone of the institution and an avid sports enthusiast. Being a passionate sports fan, he was instrumental in organizing basketball, football and cricket matches. Notably, he advocated for divisions to have their separate colors and made a major contribution to the creation of the general studies division. It is important that we commemorate and honor Barbadians who selflessly serve institutions and communities. You have not only named a building, but have created a space where the potential of our young people can be developed to secure a better future. The renaming of the complex is just one of many activities planned to commemorate the institution's milestone as it celebrates 55 years of innovative excellence under the theme Embracing Technology, Empowering the Future. Sports Night, brought to you with the compliments of Great Health Works, agents for Omega XL. Time now over to go over to Anne-Marie Burke, who is bringing us Sports Night tonight. Anne-Marie, good evening. Good evening to you, Pearson. I start with some good news from the Up and On camp. Common Mayor maintained their lead in both the boys' and girls' divisions as the field events for this year's Sandy Power Aid BSAC concluded today at Harrison College. Common Mayor out front in the girls with 51 points, while Allen School are second with 47, and St. Michael's School third on 41. In the boys, Common Mayor are ahead with 61 points, followed by Queen. Queens College 51 and Christchurch Foundation 3rd with 29 points. CBC's Anmar Goodrich Boyce reports. 
Up first was the open girls triple jump. The girls quickly went through their paces before the event got underway. And it was a memorable day for 8C Shania Thomas, fresh from winning the under 20 girls long jump. The hometown girl added a second gold medal in her own backyard. Look at this performance, a massive 12.04 meters for victory. And Thomas can pack her bags as she booked a ticket to the Carifta Games in Grenada, surpassing the standard of 12 meters. Impressive. After finishing third in the long jump, Sky Spencer Lane of the SMS Cougars continued her impressive return to track and field with a second place finish with 11.11 meters, while third went to Naima Taylor of Comamere, 11.08. And Mark Goodridge Boyce, CBC Sports. Of note is that the long jump and high jump for juniors will be contested at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex from March 18th. And of course, I just would have mentioned those points for you before, but I'm going to get the correct points for you when I return. Now, several changes have been made to the BSAT track event for the Usain Bolt Sports Complex. Again, CBC's Anmar Goodrich Boys tells us more. The major changes to this year's BSAT competition include no zonal championships and only one athlete per school is allowed to compete in each individual track event. Speaking during a media conference at Harrison College, Assistant Meet Director Dorian Best explained the new format, which has been adjusted due to the time frame. When you're at zone championships, you have 48 plus athletes, and we go forward to our semi final stage with 24 athletes. So, in order to get those 24 athletes, we said one competitor per school, and that gives us our 24 athletes, three heats um, for the 100, 200, 400, etc. BSA officials are also reporting good progress on the work being done to the new track at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex after conversations with head of UE's academy, Dr. Rudolf Allen. I can tell you that as of our last conversation yesterday, that the track has been laid, and that's great news. I've seen pictures as well, so you can send pictures that we can see that that's the case. He assured me that the lines were being um, put in from today, and it would take a little while, but he does have two crews on, that, that are working, and he believes that within the next few days that everything will be ready. BSAT's track events are set to start from the semi-final stage on March 18th and 19th, and the finals will be held over two days on March 21st and 22nd. And Mark Goodrich Boyce, CBC Sports. As mentioned before, let me give you those revised points from today's field events. In the girls' Comrade leaves with 83, Allen School is second on 75, and the St. Michael School has 70. In the boys' Comrade leaves with 101 points to Queen's College's 73 and Harrison College on 46. Now, Minister of Sports Charles Griffith says he's pleased with the continued work on the new Ryan Brathwaite track at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex. The new track has already been laid, and the marking of the lays is expected to begin tomorrow. Work on the track started in early February, which forced NAPSA and BSA officials to postpone the Premier Junior Athletics meets on the island by two weeks. Today, Griffith, along with Senior Youth Commissioner responsible for Community Sports, Sean Burke, and UWA's Director of Marketing and Communication, Charleston Lovell, toured the facility and provided the media with an update. Um, I was on the track a little earlier and it is real bouncy. I think that we should get some speed and we should be able to do some records here. So um, this is an attempt, a, a collaboration between the University of the West Indies and government to make sure that our athletes still have a facility that they can train on, that they can practice on, that they can have those meets on. So I am satisfied today at Usain Bolt that progress and real progress is being made in terms of having this particular track ready in quick time. The Business Report, brought to you with the compliments of Republic Bank. We're the one for you. In business tonight, gaps still remain in the corporate ladder for women. The observation came from Executive Director of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Misha Loban Clark, as she addressed the third annual Power Summit at the Lauder Skin Sandiford Center today. However, she admitted change is coming, but it is not going to happen overnight. Trevor Thorpe reports. 
Speaking against the theme, preparing and optimizing women in business to win, the Chamber of Commerce officials said women in Barbados and the Caribbean have been making strides in the workplace, but there are still hurdles to overcome. She said the theme underscores the need for a more inclusive society where women are not only afforded greater opportunities at all levels, but are valued as key participants in the decision-making process across all sectors of the economy. Women are still not um, um, in the boardroom. Women are still not having a seat at the table of decision-making. And that is why we are saying how can we then, as a private sector, help to advance the sustainable development agenda that speaks to greater inclusion and access for women at all levels? She said the strategic mandate of the chamber is member-focused and they are looking beyond the summit to pool resources. We, the chamber is engaging with, for example, the OAS um, and other entities to look at what kind of initiatives we can and programs we can put in place to support women in business, particularly um, women, female entrepreneurs. So that's one of the tangible things beyond the summit that we are looking at and all in keeping with the, the Chamber's commitment, not just to say that we are going to host an event. Um, certainly the event is powerful, certainly the, the, the event achieves every year its objective to enhance um, women's um, um, develop, women developmentally, but we are also looking at the tangible programs that we can then um, initiate. The executive director said the Power Summit achieves its goals and called on the audience to be true advocates for the advancement and the empowerment of women across all sectors of society. Trevor Thor for the Business Report. Commemorative rums are being produced to mark the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. Word of this from Chief Executive Officer of the West Indies Rum and Spirits Producers Association, Von Rennick, as regional rum makers prepare to unveil commemorative products. The rum official says up to 12 producers are expected to take part in the anniversary celebrations. In Barbados, we expect at least two of the local producers to be presenting their own commemorative rums, and we're very excited by this prospect. We think it's um, we think it's a, a a great collaboration between the rum industry and Caricom, and a commitment to governments to show that you know we are part part of an important part of the economy um, and a future growth industry. Mr. Rennick says interest in the initiative is high. First out of the gate was St. Lucia Distillers. Very interesting product, 12 years old, aged in four different casks, um, a blend of pot and column stills. So we, we, we're very excited at this prospect. Um, we're going to be donating the commemorative product to Caricom, but several of our producers, we think, will produce additional limited quantities for sale and we have a lot of interest in these um, in these unique offerings Back for more sporting action, Anne-Marie Burke. Now, CBC Sports continues to preview this year's the Sandy Power Aid B sack. And tonight, we take a look at an athlete hoping to put her school up and on to the top of the medal table. It's time for Athlete in the Spotlight, where we take a look at some of the track and field stars expected to dominate at this year's Power Aid Dasani VSAT Championships. Sponsored by Power Aid, pause is power, and Dasani, the first Dasani after. After capturing the under-17 girls 800-meter event at the 2023 Power Aid Desani BSAT Championship, Shanicia Bryant announced herself as one of the athletes to watch. She then followed up with not one, but two bronze medals at last year's Carifta Games. So there's no doubt that ahead of this year's BSAT, Shanicia is one of the athletes in the spotlight as a favorite to do well for the Commonwealth School. But have you ever wondered how she prepares for her races? Let's find out. 
I just have a good game plan, know how to strategize my races and execute them well. I'm working on my breathing because my breathing is not the best, but other than that, I'm fine. Shanicia will be aiming to defend her BSAP title in style, but also qualify for the region's most prestigious junior track and field event over the Easter weekend. I for sure would like to make it closer to my game, but I don't think it's going to be much pressure on me. I always mentally prepare for everything. I'm mentally prepared. How about defending your BSAT title? Is it going to be hard defending your title, or do you think it will be a lot easier? Um, in the 800, yes, but I will have some competition in the 400 now. But I'm really confident, confident in my 800, but the 400 is going to be a challenge. Now, what are you, what about the 400 challenges you more than the 800? Well, the 400 is a lot more athletic, in my opinion. Um, like a lot more relaxed in the 800 and not as pressured. So my 400 relaxed is just going to kill me to the end, but I'll push through. Janicia is well prepared physically and mentally for the challenge, and she even had a word for those coming for her crown. Just come and give me a push. Our athlete in the spotlight is Komamir Shanicia Brown. We do have reports now of a vehicular accident just outside of the George Lamming Primary School in Welch's St. Michael. As a result, traffic is unable to travel from Bridge Road to Welch's. Motorists, you're asked to avoid the area at this time. CBC News will provide more details on Instagram and our Facebook pages. Well, that's our time tonight. Thank you for spending it with us. I'm Pearson Bowen. For the crew, to all of you, good night. By God's will, we will see you tomorrow.